Okay, I'm delighted to say uh, we've been joined on the Healthy Blog this afternoon uh, by Mr. Sean Pollard. Good afternoon, Sean. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Healthy Blog. Um, to my mind, as someone who's been volunteering in Holton since I was 16 and working in the sector very fortunately for a long time, Holton Haven Hospice are one of the best known uh, voluntary organisations. You are constantly held up as a... Uh, and examples of best practice and such forth, but there might be smaller organisations, new organisations watching the film today who aren't aware about Holton Haven. So before we, we, we talk through some of the other questions, tell us a little bit about, about the Haven and the service it offers to people in Holton. Yes, I mean, obviously it does what it says on the tin, it's the Holton Haven Hospice, we are a, we're a hospice. Um, yeah. The the service falls into three main areas. We've got a an inpatient unit, and we're sat in the conservatory of, of that unit, um, which has 12 places, 12 beds. Each of the rooms are individual, so there's no um, ward as such. Right. Um, they're all in the same area, but there's no big ward like you might see in a hospital. Yeah. And that, if you like, is the heart of, of, of the hospice. But some other important services are a day hospice, mm. um, which is 60 places a week, 12 places a day. Right. And family support service, um, because we firmly believe in looking after not just the person who may be the patient, but also the family who've been caring for that patient. Yeah. And so we look after, try to look after everybody's needs uh, as far as we can. And of course, we've been around now, uh, this is our 31st year. Wow. So it's quite a long time. And going from strength to strength? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, the times are difficult. Uh, yes. we, we all know that. Of course. Um, but I'm, I'm constantly amazed at how generous the, the people of Holton are because yeah. you're probably aware that over half of our running costs um, come from the people of Holton. Absolutely. And even when times are hard, um, you know, jobs are thin on the ground, money's short, yeah. uh, people are still incredibly generous. And just this last weekend we had our twilight walk. That's right. Yeah, best ever. 592 people took that. Yeah. My colleague Dave was one of them. Oh, really? Had a whale of a time. Yeah. So. yeah. And I think as well, uh, uh, um, uh, praise to your fantastic fundraising team as well. I, uh, I mean, to be honest, I was incredibly proud of them. Yeah. Um, and it was lovely to see it wasn't just the fundraising team there. We had nurses taking part, two yeah. dressed as GB Olympic swimmers. Very yeah. nice. Others manning the desks. So all of the, it's, it's very much a team effort here. It's not, yeah. not precious that, you know, oh, I'm a nurse, I'm a fundraiser. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the keys to our success. Yes. Um, and, and that night it just... That happens that it's, it's just occurred really yeah. um, was was a fantastic example of that and the people of Holton supporting us so um, that's right and the rain held off I think it did, it did. Which, which in this summer is extraordinary <laughs> yes, yes. Right. I'd like to say that was down to my wonderful fundraising team but I don't think they could organise that thing <laughs> tell us a little bit about your role my role I'm, I'm one of the two directors of the hospice so we have a slightly unusual setup in that we don't have one chief exec we have me, I'm director of corporate services, right. and Linda Smart, who's director of clinical services. So day to day, I look after things like the fundraising, yeah. uh, the finance, the maintenance, mm. um, contacts with um, uh, partners in the community, housing trust, this, this, this kind of thing. That's my day to day role. Yes. But jointly, the two of us answer to the board, and we are jointly responsible for the running of the hospice. And keeping that infrastructure, that behind the scenes, yeah. making sure the, uh, that everything's you know, staring in the right direction. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Well, this is, this is the healthy blog uh, yeah. with Holton and St. Helens VCA. So let's talk, let's talk health issues for a while. But the health framework is changing nationally and locally. What do you think this means for the voluntary sector here in Holton? I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a fantastic opportunity, actually, because... Um, I know the uh, the reforms in the health service, well, there are a range of views about them. Yeah. Um, having said that, locally for us, um, I think one of the most, the two most encouraging things I've been to this year, one was the public launch of the CCG. Right, the clinical I, commissioning group. Yeah, the yeah. clinical commissioning group. And I came out of that meeting thank, thinking, well, I don't know what the national picture is going to look like, but actually, I think it's going to work for Halton. Yeah. Um, and I, I was enormously encouraged by that. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, yeah, as I say, it doesn't matter what your views are necessarily on the national picture. I think for us, uh, it'll work. And one of the reasons it'll work 
I think particularly for the hospice, is that we'll have one clinical commissioning group for Holton, one okay. hospice for Holton, one local authority for Holton. Mm -hmm. So we're all looking together at the same group of people, the same needs. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, it, it's strange to me that this kind of joint up approach hadn't happened before. Yes, I mean, I, I, I think we had the Primary Care Trust that yeah. started, I mean, strangely really, we had a Holton Primary Care Trust, yes. which was at the time deemed to be too small, was amalgamated, mm. became Holton's and Helen's. Yeah. Um, and we, we almost seem to have come full circle right. in terms of the, <clears throat> the area which the organisation covers. I appreciate a CCG is not a PCT, yes. um, uh, not designed to be anything like yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's strange, a small world, really. And great to see the local authority really coming into the picture as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, because the local authority are, are, are expert on the borough. Yeah. Um, you know, for, they, they know the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. um, but we're fortunate, we've got a very good one. I don't know if you'd agree, in a sense it's probably stating the obvious, but you could have the best government policy in the world that we all adored, and, and, but if the individuals in, in your locality weren't the right people to deliver that, it might yeah. go wrong. And I have a tremendous confidence in the individuals that, that we have leading the CCG, for example, yes, on the health and wellbeing board, that, yes. that this is they're going to make it work regardless. Yeah, I mean, I think it, we're, we're lucky in the sense that, that, that you know we know the people. Um, I mean, the Simon Banks, who we've known for years, an yeah. excellent operator. Um, the commissioners at the lower levels, I was with um, Jimmy Abercrombie this... Uh, <laughs> Jenny was a predecessor, my right. apologies. Um, Lindsay Abercrombie, right. uh, just last week, um, and all the the GPs that are on the on the board as well. Of mm. course, of course, we know them. Uh, and again, that, that was another huge encouragement. Really, you think, ah, it's good people running this. Exactly, exactly. They're not going to get someone coming in from from somewhere else in the country with an idea about how to you know inflict London standards on Holt and so Yeah, precisely. It's, yeah, yeah. It's local people. Yeah. So. If, um, if you met a voluntary sector organisation and, and they didn't understand what, what the, say, the clinical commissioning group was, yeah. how, how would you explain to them, as you see it, the voluntary sector's role within, within the CCG? Well, it, it, it's got to be a partnership, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, um, the voluntary sector, we're here to offer a service, essentially, like, like any other organisation. Yeah. Um, the, one of the, the advantages that we have, and it's something you might want to come on to later, is mm -hmm. that... As a voluntary sector organisation, we, we've got certain, you could call them kind of unique selling points, I yeah. suppose. Um, we're very cost effective. Um, yeah. I'll give you a small example of that. We, our service operates with 93 paid staff, right. which sometimes surprises people. They don't realise we've got so many staff. Um, but also 100 volunteers. Mm. Now, those volunteers are are actually performing incredibly important functions for the hospice. Yeah. And if you had to pay for that, it would be a quarter of a million pounds plus of additional cost. Yeah. Uh, so we, you know, we are very, we're very efficient. Um, yeah. And it's all we've ever known as a sector, isn't it? Yeah, that it is. We've, all, we've had ring-fenced funding, yeah. the tightest budgets imaginable. Yeah. So we've never been a kind of, let's spend all the money we have by the end of the financial year and we'll get the same cheque <laughs> no. in the post on April the 1st. No, absolutely not. And I, I think there's another, um, another thing that's critically important, about, especially for the hospice, is that we, we're very answerable to the population that we serve. Right. Uh, if we did not give a first-class service and listen to the people that we're interacting with, mm. half of our funding would dry up. You can't get a better incentive than that. No, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I suppose that level, of, is, is that kind of engagement and constant feedback and evaluation of what you're offering, is that a key part of, of your ethos? Here? Yeah, it, it is completely. I mean, yeah. we, we have the formal um, kind of questionnaires to um, uh, people that have used the service and we get a, a very good response rate from that and we analyse mm. it extremely carefully to see are the, are the lessons we need to learn. Mm. But also, of course, we're interacting with uh, the people that use the service every single day of the week. Of course. And not on a not in a kind of a terribly hierarchical way. I mean, I, I as director of corporate services, for example, I probably walk through the ward 30, 40 times a day. Yeah. And, and anyone can stop and speak to me. Of and course. the same with Linda, my my colleague who runs the, mm. the 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 clinical directorate. One of the things that gives me, I hope I'm not getting slightly off topic no, here, is no, great no. hope for things like the, uh, the Shadow Health and Wellbeing Board, for yeah. example, with all those different partners. Is really it's an opportunity for us to to collect very honest feedback. Yeah. Because 
you know, it might be the case that, that we have, someone has had a negative experience with one of our colleagues yeah. and we're able to feed that in obviously in a professional and constructive way sure, through, yeah. Yeah. rather than being in silo, so to speak, yeah, you know, yeah. in the past. So. I, I think one of the, the, one of the, the critical differences that, that the new organisations will bring is that I think the, the health service tried mm. to, to listen to its patients and give them what they want. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it was very good at it because it was the, the organisations were too big, right? Um, and they were driven from the top down. Of course. And I'm extremely hopeful that the new organisations will be much more responsive to the to the people they actually serve. Yes, and I think there certainly seems to be a commitment to that so far. Oh, so I, I, absolutely, there is. Let's yeah. hope that going forward. As I said before, I've been volunteering a long time, and I'm intimidated by the expression commissioning. Yeah. I know my way around grant funding. Yeah. I like filling in a form and yeah. getting some money yeah. and spending it and then reporting back. Yeah, sure. Are the Haven, how do you feel about commissioning? And, and is, is it something that's viable for you guys? Yes, I mean, it's obviously something we're, we, we're, we're familiar with because yeah. we, we've been interacting with, with commissioners for years. And the, I, I think the key to it is um, to sit alongside your commissioner and your commissioner to sit alongside you. Right. For each party to understand the the benefits they bring, uh, but also some of the issues, um, uh, because commissioners, for example, will have a finite pot of money, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be conscious that they have pressures as well. Uh, and I think the other key thing is to make sure that what you're working to achieve, um, that again you're side by side. So we would want to be speaking to the as we have done the commissioners at the primary care trust, yeah. soon to be. Clinical Commissioning Group, um, Health and Wellbeing Board, to mm. say, well, what are your priorities? What do you want to achieve in Holton? Right. And how can we as a hospice, with our particular expertise, help you achieve your aims and objectives? So uh, perhaps right to say a clear dialogue is, is the key, really. Right. Understanding what the Commissioner wants yeah. and then articulating to them how your organisation can, can deliver that. Uh, precisely that, yeah. yeah. And as you mentioned earlier on, the, the unique selling points we have we are the community. Yeah, they're so cost effective compared to uh, com compared to. And I, I think there's another thing around that as well, which is flexibility, because we're we're not a vast monolithic organisation. Right. We can very quickly change and adapt, so that if there is a uh, a new need identified or a new way of doing things, yeah. it's not going to take us, um, you know, a succession of forty subcommittees to achieve some kind of solution to that. <laughs> yeah, right. um, you know, we, we could no. probably resolve it within a few days, or maybe even one. Of course, no act of parliament necessary. No, or not no, at all. No, no, hoops, no. Say. hoops of our own to jump through, of course. Yeah, yeah. We're a lot more flexible. As you say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. It's. I remember the, the first time I, I, I we used to do a, we used to do a weekly radio show for for, for HVA as we were then and uh, yeah. Kieran Clockworthy was a regular guest on yes. the show talking yes, about yes. fundraising activities and I just couldn't believe that this wasn't a hundred percent funded by the statutory sector. Yes, I'd always assumed in my stupidity that, that that it was. It's such a vital service uh, to the people. Of but Florida. people generally have two views. They either think we get no money at all. Right. Well, we get all of it. And the, truth, <laughs> the truth is often it, it, it's right down the middle. We get slightly less than half of our funding yeah. um, is statutory funding, and the other half from the people of Holton. Um, Brilliant. And if voluntary sector groups were to contact us through the blog or, or, or through law asking advice, yeah. would you be happy to to, 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 to give them pointers? Yeah, order? I mean, if any way we can help any voluntary sector organisation, we're, we're absolutely delighted to. Um, and I, I've certainly done that in the past. Yeah, um, people have. Maybe we've got a particular sort of expertise in, in one area. We're always extremely happy to uh, to share that. It, it's part of the ethos of, mm. of hospices is that you is, is collaboration. So yeah, anybody that um, if they think I can help in some way, um, wonderful, very welcome to give me a ring. And is, is there anything else you'd like to add? Any any other messages for our sector at this time? No, I, th I think, I think we, we've covered most of it. I think it's an exciting time. Mm. Difficult financially, but that difficult does not mean impossible. Quite. It just means. Get creative. Yeah. Sean, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you very much indeed.